Jocelyn Hernandez left the Love and Hip Hop franchise in 2017 during the season six reunion. In that reunion, she made it very clear that she had other projects and things she wanted to attend to. We're proud of her. She prioritized her dreams and her goals. Four years later, on January 19th of 2020, Jocelyn Hernandez came out with Jocelyn's Cabaret in Miami. That being said, in the first five minutes of the first episode of see jocelyn discuss her, her relationship and her opinion on the love and hip-hop franchise at this time she wasn't really vibing with them that's all we can say we know as the cabaret continues and now that she's on season four she has a more of a mature approach to that situation um just being grateful for the opportunity to be on love and hip-hop it's interesting though because we see Jocelyn trying to carry over some of the drama from the Love and Hip Hop franchise into her cabaret because the first, literally the first 10 minutes, she brings up Stevie, which is why I don't feel bad for putting any of the pictures of him on the Who is Jocelyn Hernandez because without Stevie J, I don't know if there would be Jocelyn Hernandez, the Puerto Rican princess, in the Love and Hip Hop version. Now, Jocelyn Hernandez may have been famous and a performer always, but would she be on Love and Hip Hop? We don't know. She's saying this to Ballistic, which at this point, I think they've been together for like a year and a half. So she knew, she, you know, she had to be like, bae, we gonna have to talk about my ex for this first little episode so we can kind of, you know, hype up the drama from where I, where I left. And he's just going along with it being sweet as Ballistic does to get that check with his wife, fiance. He's like, you know, I'm out here trying to support you, Jocelyn, and make sure you're doing the best that you can in this music industry because Ballistic is the one who produces her beats. Also wanted to mention that in this episode, in the introduction to her Jocelyn's Cabaret in Miami, her show, it's more so set up like a following from the cabaret, like literally like following her from that reunion into the next stage of her life. And so ballistics asking her like what goals do you have you know in the next couple years and she's like talking about you know i really want to you know continue with my cabaret and support and be able to bring up some of the women that i have known for a long time in the type of industry that i was in they even tried to make a sympathetic moment and a you know tear drinking moment in the introduction of the show when they're speaking about how Jocelyn is helping these women by putting them on a platform like this and taking them um, essentially out of the strip club. The little piano in the background and Ballistic eating her ass basically or just, you know, giving her props. Oh, you're such a good woman, it, you know, yada yada. How, but how are you going to deal with these personalities? Because it's about to be Bad Girls Part 2 in this season. I don't think Jocelyn or Ballistic knew how emotionally and mentally taxing it would be to be around a bunch of personalities like this. And then they're, they're prefacing it like, oh, well, how are you going to do it, you know? But I don't think they really knew because they, they, right now we're just talking about season one. And season one, Jocelyn does not live with any of the girls yet. There is no rubric. There is no sense of how this should be. And I really didn't get that watch. It sort of sets the tone because when I first started watching this show, I didn't know what to expect. Was it a competition like RuPaul's Drag Race? Was it more of a reality TV show like Bad Girls or Bad Boys? It just it, it each season has its own judge of si like situation. One there you there was a prize in you know at the majority of the seasons after season one. It feels like a con a, con a contest or how to stay in the house and, and I think that's what kind of encourages the type of behavior that happens in those seasons and and we see why these things become you know more, this show becomes popular because that's gravitating we all love to see a good fight mamas we just see something that we don't see on tv having a discussion around these women's day-to-day -day lives being in sex work you know like we've seen documentaries like this um on netflix i've had a, seen a couple growing up but 
I like how Jocelyn is trying to make a platform for this type of lifestyle. First person we meet is Jay-Z Delight, and that is who Jocelyn brings up regarding who she wants on her roster for the cabaret when she was speaking to Ballistic. So the next scene is when they go to Daisy's apartment, or Jocelyn meets her at her apartment. I'm re-watching the season, but Daisy's baby father is a um, pimp. And he pimps out girls, and I'm assuming that's how, you know, her and him met. And Jocelyn is really close to Daisy. Daisy gave birth and invited Jocelyn to help her during that process. That's pretty freaking intimate. And, um, you know, she understands what she's going through. I didn't know Daisy was 23, girl. I had no idea Miss Daisy was 23. And I just want to say that it makes sense when Jocelyn talks about how young these women are and how able they are to be manipulated because 23 mamas, I am 22. And I'm I'm still calling my mom for everything. I'm still crying all the time. Like, she's 23. She has her own place, has a baby. What? And it's crazy. It's crazy because Jocelyn is looking at Daisy like, you're stupid. You're giving a man all the money that you make when you go out and dance and do whatever you do. Daisy's like, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Jocelyn is like, see, I grew up in California, so you couldn't just drop the R word. But Jocelyn is like, these girls are retarded. And I'm like, they're young. They're young. Who? <coughs> they're young. And a lot of them have gone through things where they're conditioned to have to trust the, in these types of relationships where they have a sense of security. That's sad. And we're, we're seeing that being commodified on TV. And here's where the first introduction of that word comes in. The bottom bitch. Now, Jocelyn says the bottom bitch, but it's better known as the bottom girl. This is Wikipedia's definition of the bottom girl. American pimp culture, a bottom girl, bottom woman, or bottom bitch is a term for a prostitute who sits atop of the hierarchy of prostitutes working for a particular pimp. A bottom bitch is usually the prostitute who has been with the pimp the longest and consistently makes the most money. So Daisy is considered the bottom bitch in her little, you know, world. I think it's just another thing that brought a lot of people's attention to this type of this show. Um, but also to affirm that there was that culture in this show as well. Because, you know, Jocelyn referred to herself as being like, and she was like, if anyone's going to be the pimp, I should be the pimp. And she feels like she's treating these women respectfully but within the parameters of what she went through as well and i'm not saying that she ever had a pimp but it's a it's about having power it's something about that is a you know that's about jocelyn feeling like she needs to have power over these people a little bit but um but her personality on tv because that that may have nothing to do with the real person that that's just what we're seeing facilitated on tv is this logic to why it makes sense for her to be a part of this pimp and prostitute relationship versus doing it herself. There's a lot of legitimate factors to it that I have no way to talk about. Like, I, I shouldn't be speaking on it because I haven't lived in that world. You know, there's protection. Um, that's one of the main things that I've heard that why people have pimps. But just just speaking solely on what Daisy said, you know, we're all trying to elevate, you know, he helps these girls get houses, get cars. It's like, how can they not do that on their own if they're the ones making the money? It's because they're children. They're coming from 17, 18 years old. You're a child when you're 18 years old. I'm sorry. You're an adult. You're labeled an adult, but you're a child. And then they're being. And that's wrong of Jocelyn as well because she refers to Daisy as the bottom bitch in the the first episode. And so so Daisy kind of comes in like she has a sense of entitlement on what happens in the cabaret. 
and it rubs and it and it creates conflict within the cabaret and that's what I didn't really like and again we see a lot first episode reinforcement of the culture that Jocelyn wants to be getting these people from which is prostitution sex work stripping and highlighting different vocabulary like walking the track which is you know just referring to going to an area where they can get a john or a trick and just talking about how those types of people like daisy's are daisy saying you know we gotta watch out you know because People that come from desperate situations act all types of ways and I think that's what Daisy is insinuating and that's not putting blame on that because that's not their fault for having to be in a de desperate situation. And I just wanted to say in this, in this voice memo because I don't think I, I thoroughly explained myself in the video that I think Daisy's targeting certain groups of people within the culture that she's in because it's like prejudice against that type of person and it's wrong and it comes from i think racism i think it comes from just being ignorant about people in general and not having a sense of compassion because everyone around each other i'm pretty sure in this industry came from this sense of desperation they can't like yeah you can you can you make the choices that drive your life of course these women made these choices and that doesn't make them bad people these are how pe this is how people get their money and she's getting her money the same way jocelyn's talking to an old manager from when she did stripping in the same strip club that she did it at and they're just talking now about why the stripping industry is different i have nothing to stay say about it um they're just talking about the fact that there's surgery more involved and incorporated versus it was more important to be physically active and fit and that Jocelyn felt like she was making more money than people make now in the strip industry. So yeah, that's that just is what has to be said and I don't really have anything to say about it though. Meets Jay and Lucky, they're cleaning the pole according to Lucky and that is when they start talking about the opportunity of the cabaret and who's going to be a part of it. It's clear by this first interaction that these girls may not get along and even in the confessional Jocelyn's like yeah these girls aka Daisy and Chastity give mean girl energy to you know Lucky and Jay and you know may call her 304 which is um you know referring to like a hoe and jay said that she was like so what that's what i do that's that's what part of my job um and again we see the how you know there could be like a certain hierarchy depending on how people are and what they have access to like if they have better wigs or you know nail nail artists or um are just you know light skin that's also a conflict between um these people as well and that's something that jocelyn brings up the fact that people that are lighter skinned are treated better in the strip clubs and that's a conversation that happens later but this that's from the perspective of this show and i feel like that's the perspective of the show what i have to say about it that's on my patreon at this point in the episode, after she introduces the main girls, Chastity, which Chastity didn't really get a proper introduction. She kind of just starts her shit off in the dressing room. Chastity, Daisy, Jay, and Lucky. Then she, oh, and Sapphire. Hilarious. Everyone always forgets Sapphire. What do me? And um, I just wanted to say that after she gets all the girls in the dressing room, that's when they start to discuss wage, what the opportunity is, what the cabaret is, because Jocelyn is really truly saying a bunch of g general words like, yeah, we want to, you know, make a club or a um, show where we just highlight dancing and around my music. And they're like, well, you know, Chastity was like, well, what does that differ as far as what I do in the club? And at that point, Jocelyn is like, aren't you just the stay at home girlfriend with your scammer boyfriend, according to Daisy? Because Daisy was the one talking about chastity and was saying that she didn't really, she was like, mm, in the beginning when she was talking about bringing chastity onto the show. That being said, 
again there's another conversation between miss sapphire and daisy around what type of attitudes and what type of behavior is permissible in different places she said that she's made more money it's five thousand dollars in atlanta and it hasn't been touched as disrespectfully as she has touched in miami um and how she's had to have a gun a gun and daisy is just like well i ain't never been through that ghetto shit i'm used to getting my ass smacked yada yada it's 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 giving like catty drama and real real life situations as far as what sapphire had to go through and daisy kind of dismissing her um i feel like she's you know the bottom girl as far as like girl everyone goes to that next also daisy is saying the n-word way too comfortably like all the time like daisy girl girl your hair texture girl where where is it giving black girl where where are where's the black in you i don't even see what even is daisy what even, is she latina like is she like what is she is that, that doesn't excuse it she's not a black woman then daisy of course has to announce that she's the bottom girl again we're seeing that language again the bottom bitch yeah daisy just wanted to i feel address a hierarchy against her and all the other girls i think sapphire just clocked out at that point because i don't really see anyone besides jay and lucky getting upset and i think they're really just getting upset because like they're young and they haven't been through as much trauma as sapphire so they probably just don't care as much um like what this little girl has to say i think that's what sapphire thinks in her mind just a lot of conversation about how the girl is different in their look and daisy just feels like she has a more polished look and what i'm getting is that daisy is like one of those girls on instagram that has a bunch of followers and kind of has like a certain style whereas lucky and jay more so follow like the life like their style is just more original not you know looking to please someone and it's not in an aesthetic quote-unquote it's again a colorism conversation i also believe it is a um overall racist conversation at this very point jocelyn went to go get her bottle to pop with the rest of the girls celebrating the cabaret and they're supposed to be getting changed also daisy's outfit was looking tight as hell i didn't know that was not like an easy thing to put on and off so i'm assuming she has some sweats for after this gig because i wouldn't want to put that on after i done did my pole workout like i would be sweating and heaving on that pole in my little lingerie set and then i gotta put on this slick condom tan mob I'm daisy and all them they get into their little you know beef about just what they look like like jay versus daisy versus lucky and again this is about exclusivity this is about hierarchy i i really don't understand how lucky and jay okay i can understand why they got so upset but i just wouldn't be taking these girls seriously like daisy and chastity like coming at jay talking you need a makeover you need a makeover like girl who are you who are you to tell me that okay miss jay is feeling confident in the type of work that she does and the type of money that she gets from it and there's just a comment that i also see passed around in these seasons i get my cash from the top of the dresser and not the floor pick up your cash from the floor meaning that again if you work as a stripper and that's your only job sometimes there's a more respect towards people that do sex work and prostitution because that's where the real money is at is less money in stripping but obviously you're giving some a different service in the other job description so there's just a fight between them and she's just calling her 304 which we all know is a hoe and um she's just like daisy's calling her that and they're just going back and forth about it until they get into a fight because like a physical fight and jocelyn comes in and it's just it's just it just is like the for first episode that you know sets the tone for how people are talking to each other in this series and again just things being said back page as ho and that's when lucky you could just see her face scrunching up listening to this argument the whole time and looking at daisy like really what were you doing what were you doing that was so different that miss j was doing and again daisy is trying to say you don't have to lay on your back to get money but daisy was doing that a couple months ago so she could her argument could just be let's all elevate let's all elevate everyone let's um and that's all I really have to say about that because I don't do that and I don't I don't feel like I should talk on something that I don't personally do and I don't think I should disrespect something that I don't personally do and you know as long as two parties are safe and all that I just don't want to seem disrespectful because people gotta do what the fuck they gotta do in this world and like 
it's not up to me to judge and just like you know capitalism fuck capitalism because it makes us do what we feel like we have to do these things like i'm sorry but at this point lucky and jay are defending themselves against chastity and they're just saying like don't touch you know lucky's just telling daisy to not touch her to not you know and then miss daisy wants to bring up lucky and her home status her where she's doing where she's living at lucky actually um lived in an apartment with another roommate and that roommate stopped paying so she had to completely you know take care of all the apartment bills and i'm assuming the thing is with this lifestyle is that it's very it's capable of course in a roommate situation they're splitting it and it's obviously more affordable in that way but when you're lifestyle you want to match a certain lifestyle and you it's not like they're living in cheap apartments or fifteen hundred dollar apartments and splitting that rent they're probably having fifteen hundred dollars each to spend 3k to 6k apartments high rises you know what i'm saying these people are addicted to money and what money can offer them that's why they're in this type of business and that's also like i was scared to put that in the video because it's like some people will find that offensive because some people have to do this job just to eat you know and these people i find that they're not they're not all doing it just to eat they're doing it to buy purses diamonds different things that they find necessary am i the one to judge on what is necessary in your life no but it's something to think about like how much will you do for money right they just argue about the things that they have and daisy's just like why don't you have a car why aren't you showing up and again it just affirms the certain things that correlate to status daisy's just claiming she has three cars but are these underneath your name on us is it your credit that they use to get these cars, or is it your pimp's credit because he's the one who has this business and just buys these vehicles to give to you there's just some clarity on how these things really work okay there's a lot of details that i think people miss when it comes to money and ownership this is where they first introduced sebastian who i did put in the tiktok um preview talking between him and lucky and in, in their type of relationship so after lucky was in that accident or it wasn't an accident but her condo got on fire her i think her roommate did it she moved in with a I, you would consider him kind of like a sugar daddy like they didn't have an official title they were like boyfriend girlfriend sort of um they did their own thing but he was the one who took care of her and it, it was just giving gross vibes because she even acknowledged that he had kids her age and he just, she just was 22 at the time like this cannot be that mean to people it's not it's not good on your character it's not good on your person it's tiresome it's tiresome 